Hello everyone. This is S.K. Mehta, presently the president of the Indian Nuclear Society called INS, established in 1998. I wish to welcome you all to this INS series lectures. This series about uh, 13 lectures is aimed to acquaint you with the various aspects of the nuclear energy its utilization in various areas benefiting humanity, the limitations and the regulatory aspects in safety and protection. One of the main objectives of the INS is to promote the advancement of nuclear science and engineering and technology related to the atomic nucleus and the allied sciences and arts. With this objective, INS has been disseminating information through journals, books, reports, newsletters, seminars, and conferences. These have mainly been to keep the INS members and other scientific communities and organizations well informed about the development in the various areas of science and technology within India and world over. All it is realized that there is a need to keep the various professionals, undergraduate students, the general public knowledgeable in their respective fields of a nuclear science and engineering. For the benefit of, uh, of the public, some of the important and the common application of nuclear being for power, industrial use, medical diagnosis and treatment, agriculture, food preservation, and various other areas. This lecture series is made in simple language and illustration with the aim to inform the general viewer about the science, engineering, and technology, social benefits of the nuclear, application of nuclear carrier benefits in nuclear and regulatory and safety of the nuclear energy, the presentations are prepared and narrated by experts on each topic in a way that the viewers with no background knowledge about the nuclear science and engineering can understand. Our effort will be to constantly provide information about newer benefits to the society emerging out of the painstaking benefit research and nuclear science and engineers Viewers are encouraged to comment, suggest, and put forward questions to the experts. The channel of the constructive communication will always be open in INS, which is website ins-india.org. Welcome all to this wonderful lecture series by Indian Nuclear Society. There are 13 lectures on various topics related to nuclear energy and its application to societal benefits. All these lectures will cover different aspects of nuclear energy in sectors like power, medicine, agriculture, and society. It illustrates in simple way the science behind nuclear reactors for all of us. Hello friends, welcome to the lecture series by Indian Nuclear Society. I am Rishi Kumar Sharma from Engineering Directorate of NPCIL, that is Nuclear Power Corporation of India Limited, Mumbai. This lecture is about design aspects of nuclear power plants with particular emphasis on Indian pressurized heavy water reactors or PHWRs. As India's current indigenous nuclear power program is primarily based on the pressurized heavy water reactors. Design of nuclear power plant is a very important and it complies with the current national and international safety requirements. This lecture aims to provide current and correct information to viewers and to the general public about the design aspects of nuclear power plants. Safety is accorded highest priority in designing a nuclear power plant. Safe design of a nuclear power plant is ensured at all the stages right from site selection, 
design, construction and operation to decommissioning. And all these aspects are in accordance with strict quality and safety standards. The principle of defense in depth, redundancy and diversity are followed in the design of all the systems of the plant. The regulatory framework in the country is robust wherein rules for safety standard, monitoring, enforcing is well laid out. Now I will try to give you a flavor about design aspects of a nuclear power plant through this lecture. This lecture provides a few design aspects of nuclear power plants. The lecture will start with introduction of power generation from thermal energy to electrical energy. We will discuss about current requirements of carbon neutral energy and how nuclear is helpful to control emission of the greenhouse gases. Then we will more focus on pressure and heavy water reactors since at present Indian nuclear pro program is primarily based on the pressurized water reactors. Design aspects, manufacturing, quality assurance, operation and maintenance, monitoring and control of in-service degradation of by in-service inspection and surveillance, regulatory oversight and finally the performance of our nuclear power plants. I will end this lecture with a short summary. Now let us see how do we produce electric power. The main aim in electric power plant except solar cell is to rotate a turbine. The turbine can be rotated using direct mechanical energy like hydro or wind or turbine can be rotated using thermal energy. In a thermal power plant heat energy from burning of fossil fuel for example coal or gas or any other means is used to convert water into steam and the steam in turn drives the turbine and generates electricity. Nuclear power plant is same as a thermal power plant. In thermal power plant heat comes from burning of fossil fuels and in case of nuclear power plant heat energy comes from fission of fissile atoms for example uranium. Heat energy comes from nuclear fission is used to convert water into steam and this in turn drives the turbine and generates electricity. This is a photograph taken in March 2017 where an iceberg site approximately four times of Delhi broke away from Antarctica and the region is global warming. So let me summarize you the term global warming. Greenhouse gases absorb infrared radiation reflected by earth's surface and result in global warming. These greenhouse gases include water vapor, carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide, some hydrocarbons etc. Human activity mainly fossil fuel substantially increases the atmospheric concentration of these greenhouse gases and enhancing the greenhouse effect which results in global warming, which in turn result in many unfavorable changes in the atmosphere or environment. Recently, we have Paris Agreement to limit the increase in global average temperature well below 2 degrees centigrade by 30 to 35 percent decreasing emission intensity of these greenhouse gases in comparison with 2005. And increase share of non-fossil energy production to at least 60 percent by 2030. So we need carbon neutral energy. So what are the ways? You can see this beautiful graph that if we consider full life cycle from mining to waste management and then nuclear power is the greenest power as it shows the minimum greenhouse gas emission among all the power production methods even if we include solar, hydro or wind. So you can see here, here is the hydro and here is the wind and nuclear greenhouse gas emission is lower than even hydro and wind. So nuclear energy is a green energy. You can see this photograph where presently four nuclear power plants are under operation, the flora and four are 
in adjacent area is very clearly visible in this photograph the nuclear power can give us 24 by 7 base load energy with high plant capacity factor this we will see in this presentation that nuclear power plants are operating in india with around 88% capacity factor it is safe and high energy density there is availability of abundant fuel so nuclear is a large base load power generation solution with almost no greenhouse gas emissions hence nuclear power can play a very important role in india's electricity generation mix pressurized heavy water reactors or we call it phwrs the nuclear power program in india at present is mainly based on series of pressurized heavy water reactors in pressurized heavy water reactor instead of one big vessel phwrs are channel type reactors having short length fuel bundles there are multiple such channels from form a phwr reactor it is a power reactor with natural uranium as fuel natural uranium means isotopic presence of fissile content as naturally formed or there is no requirement of enrichment of the fissile content that is if uranium 235 in our case it carry heavy water as coolant and moderator another important feature with this technology is that it allows on power refueling no need to shut down the reactor for refueling on power bidirectional refueling is being practiced in phwrs there are multiple channels of lower diameter in phwrs carrying the fuel the channels are subjected to high pressure as well as high temperature and the channels are housed in low pressure and low temperature horizontal vessel known as calandria see these are the channels and this particular vessel is known as the calandria there are two different loops so this is the primary loop and this is the secondary loop primary loop carries the heat from fuel bundle it transfers the heat through steam generator to the secondary loop which drives the turbine and there is no physical mixing of the two fluids so there is no activity in the fluid which drives the turbine or condenser which is cooled by either sea water or cooling towers there are two containment surrounding the whole primary system this is the primary containment and the secondary containment the whole primary system and other active systems are contained by these two containments negative pressure is maintained between the two containments such that if there is any leakage that would be from outside to inside the requirements identified to meet the safety objectives are categorized as safety functions while the design and operation principles ensures that there is least likelihood of malfunctions leading to unsafe situations such failures are still postulated and safety systems are provided to minimize the impact of these failures the fundamental safety functions in a nuclear power plant are control of fission chain reaction maintaining cooling of fuel even after shutdown due to decay heat and confinement of radioactivity so three c's are always ensured control cool and confine for example we have reactor protection and shutdown system for control emergency core cooling system for cooling during off normal condition and containment system for confining the radioactivity if there is any let me explain you the term defense in depth with a simple example see in this picture this picture is taken from internet only so it is about swimming training by a father to his son so here he he is adopting the defense in depth approach while training to his son he keeps holding his son swimming training in shallow water extra air tube is also there etc etc in the similar way defense in depth approach has been adopted in the design and operation of all nuclear power plants in india it ensures multiple functional and engineering barriers to preclude single failure and prevent release of radioactivity for that there are multiple independent and redundant layers of protection 
the uh, this approach guides the design construction inspection operation and regulation of nuclear facility it is implemented through robust physical barriers redundant and diverse safety systems strong physical security readiness and preparation for emergency response the defense in depth approach has been implemented in nuclear power plants through hierarchical deployment of different levels equipment and procedures to maintain effectiveness of physical barriers level 1 is prevention of abnormal operation and failures it is achieved by conservative design and by ensuring high quality in construction and operation to prevent failures and deviation from normal operation level 2 is control of abnormal operation and detection of incipient failures if any to prevent it from escalating to accidents we have control and protection systems in place as a part of level 2 defense in depth level 3 is control of accidents within the design basis if any deviation exceeds the level 2 for this engineered safety features are in place and well defined accident procedures are made available to each site control of beyond design basis accidents that is in very rare condition and arrest their progression is level 4 here aim is to provide an arrest provide uh, necessary arrangement and arrest the accident progression and mitigation of the consequences of accidents complementary measures and accident management is taken care of in this level confinement of radioactivity is the main aim of level 4 defense in depth level 5 is basically the mitigation in a very very remote probability if it exceeds further than level 4 then in level 5 design and well defined mitigation of radiological consequences are made available as a part of on site and off site emergency response such multiple levels of defense in depth is applied to all safety activity it provides protection against a wide variety of events resulting from equipment failure or human action originating internally within the plant or externally now if we see in detail the defense in depth level 1 itself it is basically to prevent deviation from normal operation it is implemented through design by incorporation of design margins design as per standard codes and standard practices high quality material and its procurement high quality in manufacturing and construction testing and inspection to maintain design margins high quality process for licensing of a nuclear facility by regulators operations as per well defined technical specification and within design limits requirements for manufacture of nuclear power plant components are formulated to ensure a robust defense in depth level 1 there are series of physical barriers each backing the others against the release of radioactivity like fuel and fuel sheet these are designed to contain the radioactive material then primary heat transport system which contain coolant used to carry away the heat and then the containment which is designed to mitigate the release of radioactive material when above both are compromised and finally there is exclusion zone of 1.6 km radii it basically helps in atmospheric dilution of activity in a very rare case of accidents so this is basically 1.6 km radius exclusion zone available at each plant site and this basically facilitate the atmospheric dilution of activity in a very rare case of an accident again let me explain you the principle of redundancy and diversity with another familiar example so this is an atm automatic teller machine to take out the money we need multiple systems with diverse principles you need you need your atm card physically atm pin your in your memory confirmation sms in your mobile phone for large transactions etc etc 
as i explained in earlier slides there are three safety functions shutdown of reactor cooling of core and containment of radioactivity each has very robust design to ensure high reliability to ensure defense in depth multiple backup systems are made available backup systems are designed based on different physical principles or mechanism to avoid common cause failure for example there are two independent and diverse shutdown systems in nuclear power plant one is mechanical shutoff road which is based on gravity driven falling and another is liquid pressurized pumping of poison into the reactor and so they are diverse in principle diverse physically diverse systems are available for all the three defense in depth systems in case there is non availability of primary coolant for example loss of coolant accelerant loca there is provision of emergency core cooling system sufficient inventory of water is made available and poised with the help of pressurized nitrogen accumulators in this the emergency core cooling system pumps take suction from the separation pool where the large pool of water is provided and this water is cooled by a heat exchanger by active high pressure process water and it is circulated through the core in case there is drop in pressure of primary coolant automatically the cooling water is rushed through the reactor and cooling of the fuel is ensured the system is also backed up by provision of long term recirculation structures systems or components and supports may be subjected to various operating and test loading conditions all these loads and their appropriate combinations are considered in the structural design like internal and external pressure thermal loads dead weight live loads wind loads dynamic or vibration loads for example flow induced vibrations fluctuating pressure water hammer piping reactions at support etc etc in addition to the above earthquake and soil conditions are also investigated in detail and appropriate earthquake loads are considered in the design based on the frequency of occurrence load combinations of various service loads as mentioned in the last slide are made their combinations are categorized as per the frequency of occurrence the first combination is level a normal operating conditions here frequency of occurrence of these loads is up to 1 means this these loads are expected in day to day life means the structure systems and components must withstand these loads without any damage and no inspection warranted next is level b or non as upset conditions here frequency of occurrence of these loads is from 10 to the power minus 2 to 1 means they are expected up to once in 100 years the structure systems and components must withstand these loads without damage requiring repairs next is level c for emergency conditions here frequency of occurrence is from 10 to the power minus 4 to 10 to the power minus 2 means these loads are expected from once in 10000 years to once in 100 years here design is such that large deformations are permitted in area of structural discontinuity and it may require inspection followed by repair after facing these loads and the last level is level d or faulted condition here frequency of occurrence of these loads is from 10 to the power minus 6 to minus 4 which means these loads are expected less than once in 10000 years so here design allowed gross deformations and loss of dimension instability however structural integrity of the system has to be maintained the structure system and component may be out of service for repair after seeing these loads the service loads their combinations and their applicability of various service levels are identified and are part of design specification now let us see some features of earthquake resistant design see you can notice the earthquake by some shaking or ground vibrations and you may rush to some open places and you are mostly safe means earthquake itself doesn't kill the people but collapsing of structures and systems do means with proper design of these structures we can avoid the collapsing of structures 
न्यूक्लियर पावर प्लांट आर सिस्मिकली क्वालिफाइड सिस्मिक लोड्स और अर्थवेक लोड्स आर कंसिडर्ड इन द डिजाइन ऑफ एस एस सीज डिटेल स्टडीज आर परफॉर्म टू फाइनलाइज द एक्सपेक्टेड सिस्मिक लोड्स एट द रेस्पेक्टिव साइट्स दीज स्टडीज आर बेस्ड ऑन हिस्टोरिकल ग्राउंड मोशन डेटा एंड लोकल साइट कंडीशन मीन्स वेदर इट इज सॉफ्ट सॉइल और हार्ड रॉक साइट और इन बिटवीन बेस्ड ऑन दिस डेटा two kinds of earthquake loads are finalized operating basis earthquake obe and shape shutdown earthquake sse operating basis earthquake or obe is the vibratory ground motion for those features of the power plant which are necessary for continued operation without undue risk to the health and safety of the public expected frequency of occurrence of these loads is once in 100 years safe shutdown earthquake or sse is the vibratory ground motion for those features of the power plant necessary to shut down the reactor and maintain the plant in a safe shutdown condition without undue risk to the health and safety of the public expected frequency of occurrence of these loads is once in 10000 years in general the maximum vibratory ground motion of the ob is considered as equal to at least one half of the sse in nuclear power plants detailed seismic motion studies are performed and seismic resistant design is finalized based on detailed analysis as you can see in this figure where detailed finite element model of the reactor building is made and testing on sheet table structural loading part is taken care by detailed analysis and functional part is confirmed by testing on sheet tables various sheet table facilities are available in india and these are being used for our facilities as you can see in this photograph where a 10 ton shake table facility at cpri or central power research institute bangalore is being used to qualify 400 volt dc switch gear structures systems and components are designed with graded approach based on their safety significance and accordingly safety classifications of these structure systems and components are defined as per the regulatory guidelines safety class 1 is the structure systems and component required to perform the safety functions necessary to prevent the release of substantial fraction of core fission product inventory to the containment or environment are classified as safety class 1 system for example uh, primary heat transport system safety class 2 the structure systems and components that perform the safety functions necessary to mitigate the consequences of an accident which would otherwise lead to release of substantial fraction of the core fission product inventory or activation product inventory into the environment are classified as safety class 2 for example emergency core cooling system as we see in the last slide safety class 3 is basically the structure systems and component required to perform a support role to safety functions in safety classes 1 uh, and 2 are classified as safety class 3 and ssc which incorporate safety functions that do not fall within safety class 1 or 2 or 3 they are basically classified in safety class 4 as i mentioned during the safety classification primary pressure boundary components and critical fuel handling components are categorized as class 1 and designed and manufactured with stringent codal requirements these are designed using detailed design by analysis approach these are designed for six set of conditions along with 40 evolution for transient loads as you can see in this table various loads and their combinations each service level has got well defined load and their combinations see here is the operation basis earthquake and in in level b and safe shutdown earthquake in level d or faulted condition for ob and ssc load both inertia as well as 
seismic anchor moments are taken care of. So this is seismic anchor moment and this is basically the inertia. Now let us see some features about material requirements. If you see a typical stress strength curve for steel, complete failure is basically here. Sufficient factor of safety is considered for design of components. For normal operating conditions, the factor of safety is 3 by 2 on each strength and 3 on ultimate tensile strength. So we design here with consideration of factor safety. This is how there is inbuilt factor of safety in the design and we have that much energy in our pocket for off normal conditions. In addition to that, cobalt contained in material, especially for uh, in our business of nuclear power plants, where cobalt content of material may increase induced activity. In view of this, radiological protection is enhanced by choosing cobalt free materials and by providing adequate shielding thickness and optimize design and layout of components and systems. Another important feature in design of nuclear power ping is adoption of leak before break design philosophy. LBB or leak before break is basically demonstrated through detailed fracture mechanics analysis that there is negligible chance of catastrophic break without prior indication of leakage. It is ensured by demonstrating three levels of safety assessment. Level 1 inherent in design where material meets stringent requirements of codes and standards. In material design, fabrication, inspection and testing. This ensures material free from any impermissible flaw. Detailed stress analysis and codal qualification of the components and selection of ductile and tough material. So all these parts are taken care of as a part of level 1 leak before break qualification. Level 2. In level 2, a flaw is postulated at most critical location. A part through flow is postulated in most critical location and using fracture mechanics evaluation, it is demonstrated that postulated flaw at most critical location with most uh, stringent loading condition will not grow enough to penetrate the wall for all service loading condition including fatigue cycles and OBE and SSE. Level 3. The level 3 leak before break design is like a fire alarm where any small fire is detected and corrective action is taken. Similarly, as a part of level 3, sensitive leak detection system are in place. It is demonstrated that Postulated leakage size crack is stable at most critical location and the leak detection system is sensitive and capable enough to detect one tenth of the leak from timely. If you see from manufacturing point of view, state of the art manufacturing process and stringent quality control for material is being practiced. All the class 1 two and three nuclear components are fabricated, inspected and tested as per applicable standard codal practices. Raw materials are procured to meet the relevant specifications. We have dedicated NPCIL team for quality assurance. Detailed documentation of manufacturing is prepared and kept preserved. It comprises of material source, test certificates, test reports, Quality assurance plan are approved procedures, non-destructive examination reports, dimensional reports, they basically all are kept preserved and they form part of history docket for any particular component. Quality assurance, but what quality is? Quality means degree to which the product or service meets the specification requirements. Quality assurance is a way of preventing mistakes and defects in service and manufacturing products. Quality assurance program is formulated to provide assurance of quality at every major step in a nuclear power plant, right from design to procurement, manufacturing, construction, commissioning and operation. You can see in this figure, there is standard uh, guidelines and standard operating 
and maintenance procedure for aircraft operation and these SOPs are well defined to avoid any error. In a similar fashion, standard maintenance and operation procedure SOPs are implemented to ensure intended function of each component. Proper maintenance and SOPs help safe, reliable and economic operation of the plant. And most important, normal plant operation is not permitted and most important, normal plant operation is not permitted unless sufficient backup to safety related systems are available. See, we do preventive maintenance of our car timely to avoid any breakdown. In similar way, we have well defined and much more strict preventive maintenance plan in place for nuclear power plants. And this can be visualized from statistics that Indian nuclear power plants have been performing well with very high availability factor over the entire lifetime owing to the conservative design, quality assurance and good operational practices. One such practice is preventive maintenance and biannual shutdown of the reactors. Though we have online refueling technology in place, however, biannual shutdown of the plant is taken for in-service inspection, containment testing, preventive maintenance, etc. It basically minimizes the unscheduled outages of the plant. On redundant system, preventive maintenance is performed on power with standard procedure to minimize the outage timings. There, there is material degradation during service in nuclear power plants. The same is being monitored and appropriate provision is made in the design. Corrosion and erosion of components due to service conditions is identified in design specification. One way to address this in design is by increasing the thickness of components based on material and service condition, for example, 10% for piping. Slight change in composition also improves erosion of flow accelerated corrosion resistance. For example, a small percentage of chromium addition in the carbon steel increases its corrosion resistance properties. One another degradation in core components of especially in nuclear power plant is change in material properties mainly due to neutron irradiation. It basically increases the yield strength and ultimate tensile strength of the material but it decreases the fracture toughness and overall toughness of the material. You can see in this figure that yield strength of the material after irradiation increases drastically and the toughness of the material decreases after irradiation. Corrosion, erosion, flow accelerated corrosion, irradiation induced changes, degradations are monitored in nuclear power plants by periodic in-service inspection and well-defined surveillance program. Well-defined periodic in-service inspection has been instituted to cover all the critical items important to safety as per the IEA safety guide 50 SG02. Inspection areas and degree of inspection depends on fatigue uses factor, stress intensity, ratio. In-service inspection intervals are chosen in such a way that any deterioration occurring in systems or components is detected well before and any failure takes place. For any defect, flaw found during in-service inspection, detailed structural integrity assessment is carried out. You can see in this table that for each component there is well defined in-service inspection program as well as the NDT methods for example visual, ultrasonic etc. for vessel, for piping, for supports. There are different well defined examination methodology, visual, surface, volumetric and ultrasonic thickness gauging etc etc for each uh, critical components of the plant. Well formulated material service pro surveillance program is in place for each nuclear power plant as these materials or components experience, experience the aggressive environment of temperature, stress, corrosion, radiation. Uh, radiation primarily uh, radiation is due to neutron flange. To avoid radiation damage in reactor. A structural material service program is made 
and adopted for structural materials to monitor the changes in mechanical and fracture properties, hydrogen induced degradation, change in microstructure or chemical composition of the material, etc. Regulatory oversight. Over and above, there is regulatory oversight for each nuclear power plant in India. Regulatory consent is obtained at each major step during plant construction and operation, right from siting to decommissioning. For siting, regulatory agency evaluate whether the site is suitable for from environment and other considerations, design as per the regulatory guidelines and meets the regulatory requirements, detailed safety analysis are carried out, it is ensured that design has appropriate engineering safety features, construction is made with strict quality control and meeting the quality requirements, commissioning tests are performed to verify adequacy of all safety related features as per the design intent, whether operation of the plant is following technical specification and are consistent with uh, consistent and meeting the intent of regulatory requirements, whether operation is meeting the dose criteria or not, regulators are ensured whether emergency preparedness plans exist with each site or not and decommissioning as per the regulatory guidelines. In addition to the above, through routine regulatory inspections, Atomic Energy Regulatory Board AERB ensures that the nuclear or irradiation facility is in compliance with the regulatory requirements and licensing conditions. With all of these features, as mentioned in previous slides, excellent performance is presented by Indian nuclear power plants. Capacity factor has improved significantly over last decade, indicating consistent performance of Indian nuclear power plants. Last financial year, it was 88%, which is competing with all the world standards. 360 times Indian reactors have been operated continuously for more than one year and seven times more than 600 days. Another example of good performance is made by our Kaiga 1 reactor. That time, world record was made by Kaiga 1 site by operating the reactor continuously for 962 days. At present, also, the record of second longest operation of nuclear power plant in the world exists and it belongs to Kaiga site. With this, I summarize my presentation. Nuclear safety is of paramount importance at all the stages, right from design, manufacturing, construction, commissioning and operation of nuclear power plants. Defense in depth is the guiding principle for design and operation of nuclear power plants. Quality at all the stages strengthens the level 1 defense in depth. While formulating the requirements, a graded approach is used based on the safety functions with high safety standards, very good and very good performance. Nuclear power plants can play a major role in present energy scenario to give carbon neutral green power to the country. So, for a green future, nuclear is the large base load clean energy solutions for generations to come. With this, thank you for your interest and patience hearing of this presentation. So, I hope you all enjoyed this lecture. Do not miss other lectures.